You know, there's one thing that's kind of unique about this project after work segment that I'm putting out on Tuesdays. You get to see an aspect of my life that perhaps very few know about. You know, I like to do my little farming ranching project. It's kind of a hobby deal, but it gets my mental sanity outside of the shop here. Well, for 30 years, I've also been involved in the rental landlord business, both residential and commercial. So now you're going to be able to see an aspect of my life that uh, is not very well publicized, maybe locally, maybe, but past that, probably not. And this week, I might be introducing how to commit landlord suicide. Well, this building that you see in the background is a building that was built in 1906. There's quite a history behind it that I will share with you here shortly. But we acquired this building, Diane and I, in February of 2003. So I'd like to show you a little closer just what this building is all about. Well, this building was initially built, like I say, in 1906, and it was designed to be a hotel. In fact, it was called the Southern Hotel. And it was the first hotel of this size in Joliet. There was one previously that was much smaller, but it was inadequate for the needs of the town. So in 1906, a man named, last name was Smith, built this building, started in April, of 2006. This whole building is pretty significant in size. It's 60 by about 100. So I have the, a floor plan of this building. This building is actually on the Montana Historical Registry and it is uh, pretty significant. It's listed as one of the main significant buildings in Joliet here. So each of these windows on the top floor represented an individual room. Is not quite so much on the bottom floor. We'll get inside and I'll show you some of the layout of how this uh, floor plan was. So this is the opposite side and like I say once again on the second story where every one of these windows was, was a hotel room. Well, this is the entry door. So this was the entry lobby in this day. This once was all open, and I'll show you the old metal ceiling here. Still remains the old banister and railing that goes up to the second floor. You can see it still has the old metal ceilings. So you can see the corner trim here, where I think from here forward used to be an open lobby. But this is an added room that I'm contemplating that I may remove and make this apartment more into an efficiency apartment instead of the full size single bedroom that it is now and turn this back into the original entry lobby. So as it continue toward, this would be about the middle of the building. There was some type of a, a door here. You can see the Places where the hinge were are, it looks like maybe a double French door type of affair. This from the floor plan looks like this was a hotel room. But from here back, from this point up, I think was what was the dining room. So this door here opens into what used to be the owner's living quarters. The owners lived here and then managed the apartment buildings this is the entry hallway into the living quarters of the owners when they lived in this apartment back here. So this particular apartment has been vacant for about a year, maybe a little more. The last tenants that I had in here ended up having, un, unannounced to me, until after they left, five dogs and I think two cats. So needless to say, it was pretty horrendous in here. They both work full time and they were left in here unattended. So I have removed all the flooring, done lots of cleaning. So it's kind of in that state right now. But this was the living room area 
bedroom here off to the right and then continuing on back to the very back so this was the kitchen area and according to the floor plans that's with the National Historic Registry this back section here initially was the kitchen which provided meals for the complete hotel building. I keep calling it an apartment building, but back then it was a, a hotel building. So this was the kitchen and then what is now living room from the floor plan again indicates that this was the public dining area. So you can probably imagine multiple tables, chairs set up that this where all the residents or, you know, as they were coming through, as we do today, you know, stop and get them a hotel or a motel. This was a hotel. Well, they would have their meals served here as part of the accommodations of the Southern Hotel. So I think this was, this area here initially was the dining room. The back end was the kitchen. So I'll take you upstairs. So as you just come in the door, this would have been a room here and you can still see the old style door and trim. So I think this building was remodeled from just my guessing, maybe in the 60s. You can see the wood panel siding is in multiple places around the front in the foyer area you know it's just a signature of that 60s era but we'll head upstairs and I just like some of this old original banister hand railing still in pretty decent shape this takes a little oiling a little cleaning up and the deck on this front porch is no longer safe, so I put a lock on this door just for the safety of everybody, but this will be part of the, the cleanup. Restoration will be to take care of this front porch. So I've had this apartment building vacated since the 1st of October, anticipating I'm going to do some repairs and remodel on this building. Apartment to the left, apartment to the right. This set of stairs to the back is what went down to the owner's quarters that we were down, which would have been the kitchen. So anyway, this is kind of condition of this building as it is now. Um, we bought it in 2003, so it's been just a couple months shy of 20 years that we have had it. I've had kind of these uh, intentions or desires for this building kind of from the get-go. I really like this old building. It, it just kind of it's one of those buildings that needs help and so I've been kind of putting it off a bit but now it is time that I'd like to do something with this building so I really started looking into the options of investment property back in the mid to late 80s uh, going to classes trying to learn what all is involved how the numbers work and it wasn't until 92 that I actually jumped in and bought my first multiplex apartment building. It's actually the one that's next door to my shop that I antagonize now with my blacksmithing. But anyway, I've since sold that one. I like the integrity of this building uh, much more so. But landlording is a challenge. That is perhaps an understatement. It is not for everybody, and sometimes I have thought it's not for me. Um, I, I started doing this as an alternative to investing into cows and getting more deeply involved into the ranching part of it. But as I was looking at numbers and contemplating the investment to buy enough ground or rent and livestock and yada, 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 I decided to go into residential multiplex and eventually into commercial multiplex buildings, which I have done. Now this apartment that I have on my left, as you come up the stairs, it's the first one to the right. I've already been in here, and so I know what's in store. 
But this is going to be the number one reason why people do not like becoming a landlord. If I find the right key here. And so just as a heads up, it's not pleasant. So this is what I walked into when the last tenant in this apartment building vacated. And this is not the first time that we've run into this scenario. Handle is gone. It's pretty amazing, but actually, like I say, this has not been the first time. Unfortunately, this is somewhat common. Had two young children. This is what we are left with. So this is the living room that is right off of the kitchen. Evidently with a bedroom. That trim molding broken, torn down. Pretty common, like I say, the number one reason why people don't like to become a landlord. And it's been my number one challenge as well. So the first room off of the kitchen is a bedroom. And very typical, leave your mess behind. Take what you want, leave the rest, the landlord will deal with it. And the very back bedroom, chair, table. So anyway, that's, that's one of the rooms we have here to deal with. I'll just bring dumpsters around to the front and we'll empty it out. So you begin to kind of recognize character traits and you know, sometimes you don't find out till after the fact that promises, promises are empty and full of lies. But pretty soon you start to smell a rat. And that was kind of the case here. So I think this apartment building deserves better than this. That's why I decided to say, okay, everybody find a new place to live. I'm going to fix this building. And I'm willing to do that. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So that's kind of the bird's eye view of what was once known as the Southern Hotel. Pretty upscale, kind of cutting edge of the time. Anyway, I would like to do it proper respect and bring some of that back. Um, it's gonna be a fair bit of an investment. I have all new windows ordered except for those right behind me. I replaced those probably about 10 years ago with a thermal pane window. They weren't really correct size, but it's what I chose to do at this time. I since have learned that this company can make replacements that will be the exact fit for all of these windows. So all the original framing will be the same, but they'll be up to thermal pane. I ordered those the 1st of October. They should be here tentatively, they're thinking, next week. So I won't be able to open all this up and do that window repair work until springtime when the weather permits. But through the winter, I'm going to do some of the tearing out demolition, if you want to call it that, and, and reworking some of these. I'm going to go through the kitchens, the bathrooms, floorings, uh, deal with some of the doors, and bring this back up to more presentable scale and uh, I think the building deserves it and I think the town of Joliet deserves it. It's on the historical registry and it deserves to stay there. So once again appreciate you following along and as we go you're going to see more detail what each individual room is like. So in many ways this project is not all that dissimilar from what I do here in the wagon shop. We're taking old vehicles, trying to learn their history, like this mud wagon project we're working on, 
and then take it back to what it would have been somewhat in its earlier days, whether it's brand new or to whatever era that the owner chooses. Well, in this case, I happen to be the owner, so I get to make those choices. I'm not going to put this back into a 1906 hotel again. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, when you get involved into investment properties, the whole idea is to make a return on your investment. So that's when, you know, that's why I mentioned that this possibly could be landlord suicide. It's doing the opposite short term. Here I am kicking out tenants that provide an income return on my investment. But I'm looking at this more as a long term and at the building itself. I think the building deserves to be brought back up to a standard that was more indicative of the day that it was built. And I think long term it is more of an opportunity than an act of suicide. I think we'll all know in the end when we're done. So it's kind of a challenge. It's not something I have not done before. So I just encourage you to kind of follow along, add your input. Some of you are professionals at this, I am not. Um, we'll see how it goes, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. So appreciate you following along.